Good morning and welcome to the Greater Philadelphia Church of Christ, our online service. My name is Chip Mitchell and I want to welcome you to our worship time. I currently lead the Greater Philadelphia Church of Christ along with my wonderful wife, Ruby Mitchell, and I'm honored that you would join us this morning on our online worship service. Uh, why don't we go to God in prayer and then we'll jump right on into today's message. Father, thank you so much for life and all the many blessings that we have in you. We know, Father, this is only because of your grace. And your grace is only found in Christ. And we thank you, Father, so much for giving up your son that we may have life. And we pray that in our life that we will surrender ourselves unto him and live out your will in our life. God, be with the message today as we dive into your word, continuing in the book of 1 Corinthians. Let your spirit guide our hearts and our minds to understand your will. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning, and uh, I'm glad uh, to be with you. Uh, I'm excited uh, to share uh, the message with you today, and uh, I hope that uh, all is going well for you and your family. Uh, today's message, we're coming out of 1 Corinthians. We're doing a series on the book of Corinthians, 1 and 2 Corinthians. And uh, today I have the honor and the privilege of bringing to you uh, chapter 10. And uh, this message is entitled, Run in Such a Way to Get the Prize. As you know, we're in uh, Cor Corinth. Uh, we're studying out the, the Corinth, the church in Corinth. And uh, they had the Isthmus Games, which are precursor to the Olympics. And uh, so when Paul writes this, in this particular chapter, he talks about competing as an athlete for that prize. And uh, I just thought it was so fitting today to entitle it, Run in Such a Way to Get the Prize. And we have our sister here, uh, uh, McLaughlin, who has set the world record for the 400-meter uh, hurdles. Uh, what an amazing accomplishment, and uh, it's so encouraging every time we get a chance to see uh, our sister in the news. So that's awesome. Well, let's jump right on in uh, to the Word of God, and uh, let's see what God has to say to us. We're going to begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning in verses 24 through 27. Paul writes, he says, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run? But only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last for how long? Forever. Verse 26, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Now, Paul is trying to help the church here in Corinth. As you know, we've been reading through Corinth, and they have faced many challenges. They, uh, they've had many struggles, and Paul is addressing them as we work through each chapter. And he gets here, and, he's, and, and you know, really, in, in chapter 9 and chapter 10, he's, he's really saying, look, let me help you out with something. You may teach and preach what is right, but you yourself can be disqualified. And, and, and this is a very sobering uh, portion of the letter, because he's saying, look, you know, only one gets the prize. And, and he talks about, you have to beat your body. In other words... The need for what? Self-discipline. The need for self-discipline. Paul is calling on the church to go, look, you may have the right teaching. You may preach the right message, but you can dis be disqualified. And he says, run in such a way not to be disqualified. And that's what this letter is all about. He's trying to help the church here, so that they don't lose the greatest gift that God could give to us. And what is that gift? That gift is salvation. And so, you know, when you think about beating our bodies, when you think about this, this idea of running this race, this is a race 
of life. It's a journey on a, a road of faith. And there are so many obstacles and challenges that we face, but we have to exercise spiritual self-discipline. And, and there are a few areas, you know, uh, you know, in a given year, uh, a given time, there's always changing seasons, right? You know, there's, there's different stages in life. You know, you go from, you know, a high school student to a college student to single professional. And, and if you so choose to get married, you, you go into a married life. If you so choose to have kids and kids, I mean, there are so many different stages of life and each stage poses its own challenges that demand that you and I, as disciples of Jesus Christ, exercise spiritual self-discipline. Why? We beat our bodies. As, uh, as, a, as an athlete competes, we train, we go into strict training. Uh, for what reason? So that we're not disqualified. Different stages. You know, there's seasons. Seasons of change. You know, uh, the fall versus the summer and the spring and the winter. Uh, you know, for everyone, each one of these changes, uh, they do pose other challenges, but they also pose great opportunities. You know, the fall could be a time as you roll in here. Now we're in September, uh, a time of change. You can set new ambitions. I know for October, October is always a month that I think about the next year. I begin to come up with my New Year's resolutions in October. I, I begin to meditate on what God has done in this year and what I'm hoping that God would do in the next year. You know, you always get new beginnings, right? There's always changing seasons, a new beginning, you know, maybe, you know, new career, or a new, new job or a new state, a new relationship. All these offer great opportunities, but they also offer great challenges as well. You know, it's health issues. When you think about exercising spiritual self-discipline, uh, when you face uh, certain uh, health challenges, you, you know, you can grow weary. Uh, you, you can grow tired of fighting and, 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 and find yourself uh, uh, feeling like you're losing the battle of health. And, and that plays on our emotions and our mental health. Uh, there, there's, uh, there's also suffering of loss, you know, obviously going through this pandemic. So many of us have lost loved ones. Um, that we never imagined in, in this last year and a half that this could happen. But th these are challenges that we face. And when you go through these challenges, you have to exercise spiritual self-discipline. You know, uh, tragedy happens, self-denial. You know, there's always that personal growth, right? We're all trying to achieve a, a particular ambition, a goal, or a something that we desire to accomplish and, and, and it, and it needs to, uh, uh we need to exercise spiritual self-discipline. We have to beat our bodies to, to grow, to mature and, and not give up in where we want to be in our life. There's, there's weaknesses. We, we want to overcome those weaknesses. You don't want to give up, but it takes a discipline, a strict training, you know, reaching the loss and, being as zealous as Jesus was for the lost world that we live in. You know, life offers its own set of challenges in general, family challenges, career challenges, financial pressures. You know, you look at life and you think, man, once I get past this challenge, I'll be free and clear and there'll be no more. No. And then another challenge comes and another challenge comes that that is a part of life. But in each one of these challenges and roads that we go down these journeys, we have to exercise spiritual self-discipline. And Paul was trying to help the church out here in Corinth as they were facing some challenges, how to deal with them. And he uses a reference. He, he, he gives them a warning from Israel's history. And, and he writes here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 1, he says, For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact. Brothers and sisters, our ancestors were all under the cloud and they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they all ate the same spiritual food and drank from what? The same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, listen at this. Even though they were God's chosen people, even though they were baptized, if you will, in the cloud and following Moses. And, and he's just making this reference here to say, hey, look, these were called out people of God, just like you. 
He's trying to help us to understand that we're just like them. He's not making some theological teaching here. He's just saying we are just like they were chosen by God. But yet, even though being chosen by God, he says here in verse five, nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. And then he says this, their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Wow. You, you read this and you just go, whoa, this is challenging. You see, cause Paul is setting the stage here. He says, look, We've got to go into strict discipline. We must beat our bodies, right? Make them slaves of God, slaves of the will of God. He says, I want you to understand the importance of this because he says, I equate it no different to Israel. When Israel was called out of Egypt and God made them his people, he says, yeah, they were called out. They were special. They were a chosen people. But yet being chosen, called out by God, miracles amongst them by God. The Bible says here, God was not pleased with them, with many of them. And not only that, he says their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. And Paul is trying to help the church here in Corinth to understand, don't think you are okay because you are a part of God's church. Don't think that God does not bring judgment upon, yes, even his church. And he, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant of this fact. Because to ignore this reality would then serve as motivation not to go into strict training of, and going forward to be what God called us to be. So what is he saying? He says, heed the warning. You know, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 6, notice what he says. He says, now these things occurred, speaking of what happened to Israel, as examples to do what? To keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. It, so he, he's coming to the Corinthian church here, and he's saying, look, Corinth, brothers and sisters, look at the example of our forefathers. Look at our ancestors. Here are the people that are called out by God, but yet look at what happened to them. They, they set their hearts on evil things. And then well, what happened? Well, God judged them. You know, God dealt with them. And, and, and when you think about that, well, you go, well, well, how did God deal with them? Well, Numbers chapter 21, verse 5, it says, they spoke against God and against Moses and said, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. Numbers chapter 16, when they got involved in immorality, and uh, notice what happens, Numbers chapter 16, verse 49. But 14,700 people died from the plague in addition to those who had died because of Korah. So here it is, you know, rebellion and uh, immoral acts. God brought judgment on his people. Thousands upon thousands died. And, you, and when you read here in, in 1 Corinthians 10, what is Paul saying in verse 6? He says, these examples occurred for what reason? To keep us... To, from setting our hearts on evil things. You see, if we set our hearts on evil things, God will bring judgment on us. And, and when we have the example, what was the example of the Israelites? Well, idolatry. You know, they would they worshiped the calf, they worshiped other gods. Well, we we don't have we we don't have that challenge of calf, golden calves, but we have the challenge of worshiping our jobs, our kids, my me time, materialism, self-care. These things become so important to us that they push out God and spirituality. In addition to that, we can set our hearts on sexual immorality, the desires that wage war from within us, and allowing ourselves to be given over to immoral acts and immoral activity. You see, you set your heart on this. Paul is saying, here's the end result. The same that happened to Israel will be the same that happens to you. And then thirdly, rebellion against leadership. And God, one of the things that we see with Israel, as Paul makes reference to them, is that they grumbled all the time. 
They were unhappy with God, unhappy with God's leaders. They always had an issue, always had an attitude. You know, in our DNA is just rebellion in America. It, it, this country was birthed in rebellion. We, we're just rebellious in any, you know, look at, you know, somebody says, hey, wear a mask. We're like, don't you infringe on my freedom. I mean, it's, we're just, we're crazy about being told something to do. We, we, we're, we, we, we're just rebellious by nature. Far be it from us to bring that into God's church. And Paul warns them, just like Israel set their heart on evil things, rebellion, grumbling, complaining, God brought judgment on them. The same can be true of us. Um, things I want you to consider. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. He says, these things happened to them as examples that were written down as warnings for us to for whom, listen to this, on whom the culmination of ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. I mean, Paul is uh, really pleading. He says, these things were written down for you. They are applicable to you. And notice what he says here. He says, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. You know, it, there's, he has to impress upon them the idea that, no, no, this is for you. Far too often we can be uh, prideful and uh, self-sufficient in thinking that these things are not um, uh, temptations that we will face nor are applicable to us. They are. And he says, be careful that you do not fall. Verse 13, notice what he says. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. Paul is saying that none of us are any different. You don't, you don't reach some level of maturity <laughs> where temptation is no longer an issue or you don't face the same challenges that they face. He says, don't look at Israel. Don't look at their history and think, well, that would never happen to me. He says, no, no temptation has happened except what is common to mankind. In other words, all of mankind is a mess. And we have to be careful about where we set our hearts at. He says, except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Here's that word, endure it. Well, what is he talking about? We beat our bodies, right? We go into strict training. There's endurance, right? There's hard work. He's saying, look, you can endure this. Well, here's some things to consider. Our God, our relationships, and our heart. With our God, you know, God provides a way out. You know, Whatever you're going through, whatever challenges you're facing, whatever obstacles that are ahead of you that you feel like may be insurmountable or whatever difficulties or scenario that needs to change, listen, God will provide a way out. Look at Israel. They didn't think he would, and that was a dire situation. But God provided a way out. Those who were faithful and persevered made it. Those who were not did not. With our God, we have to understand he's sovereign and he cares and he's all for you. He will provide a way out. Our relationships. You know, the bottom line, there's no salvation by association. <laughs> Just because we're in the church and disciples of Jesus Christ in the church, there's no salvation uh, by association. Paul makes it very clear. He goes, I don't want what happened to some of them to happen to you. He says, I don't want you to preach the word and teach the word, but yet be disqualified from the prize. See, just because we're a part of the church doesn't mean that we're going to make it. We've got to beat our body. We've got to go into strict training and do what's right by God so that our heart doesn't get set on evil. It's not a performance issue, but it's where our hearts are set on. And we can be carried away by evil. You know, how I live, you know, it matters to the community of the believers. My life, how I live, how I interact, my words, 
my actions, my inactions, they affect the community of believers. We have to live as family, understanding that my life and what I do, it matters. And finally, our heart. We must deal with a heart that grumbles. There's so many things to complain about in the world that we live in. There's so many opportunities to criticize and tear down. We should not bring that into God's church. Let's encourage one another, how often? Daily. And build one another up. It's right, it's appropriate before God. When we grumble and complain, it, it ruins faith, it hurts, it destroys, and it doesn't build up. And lastly, with our hearts, you know, Paul makes them look at Israel. He says, look at this example. Those that made it were faithful. Those that didn't were unfaithful. And he's calling us to imitate what is good, what is right. Who are you imitating? Who are the individuals in the, in the Bible that you're imitating? Who are the people in your life that exemplify Christ in certain areas? Who are you imitating? See, we've got to go into strict training, beat our bodies, make it a slave to our God, make it a slave in, the, in, in what God expects in our relationships, make it a slave in what God expects from our heart. Brothers and sisters, I love you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you this text. And I pray that the words that we've shared have helped you and have guided your heart more closely to God. If you're a guest with us, click on the link below. If you want to get in contact with us, please go to gpcc.org. Click on the contact. We'd love to get together. If you want to study the Bible, uh, look at some of these things on a more deeper uh, in a more deeper uh, sense, we can do that. If you're looking for a small group in your area, click on the link. We can connect with you and help you out with that. Thank you. I'm so thankful you were with us today. You have an incredible day. Take care. Thanks again for joining our live stream service. We have discussion questions located in the description for deeper reflection on today's sermon. If you're visiting with us, and you want to get connected, you can visit our website at gpcc.org, click on the contacts tab and send us your information. And we will reach out and connect with you as soon as possible. We will end with one last song to end our live stream service.